pimps, power, and pretty ladies. This is Blacks History Month, a 28-day celebration of black exploitation films. After I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, the black exploitation era just kind of faded away. It wasn't completely forgotten about, but it kind of went to the background of people's minds. Yeah, there were a few movies that were released that paid tribute to it, like Original Gangsters and Jackie Brown, but those movies proved to be celebrations of the actors that were a big part of the era more than the actual movies themselves. Then you had movies like Undercover Brother, which was admittedly very funny, but was more of a modern film that showcased the style of the 70s more than anything else. Then when it seemed like nobody was paying attention, a trailer was released online for a film called Black Dynamite, and fans of the 70s black exploitation era got excited all over again. It showed Michael Jai White as the main character also named Black Dynamite, a big, tough, crime-fighting machine with a giant afro and even bigger guns. He looked like everything we knew and loved about the era, all crammed into one person. But we wouldn't learn just how much it showed love to these movies until it was released. Black Dynamite was written and directed by Scott Sanders and also co-written by Byron Menz, somebody who you definitely know but probably never knew his name. He played Ray Ray on South Central. So I know a bunch of you right now are going, oh yeah, that guy. The story goes that Michael Jai White was listening to James Brown's Superbad one night and started feeling nostalgic for the 70s. He contacted Sanders and they started coming up with the idea of the ultimate homage to the black exploitation era. I have to say, they nailed it. Since they decided to make it another spoof, like I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, they had free reign to go as silly as possible. Unlike I'm Gonna Get You Sucker though, they wanted the comedy in Black Dynamite to be grounded in the silly inconsistencies that already existed in these old movies to begin with. Things like boom mics being visible in the camera. To the wall. I ain't gonna let them hurt the kids. Stock footage being used even if it doesn't match what's on screen. Characters being swapped out because of unseen offset differences. I am. Motherfucker. And many, many more examples. They cram so many time period accurate stuff into this movie that you just have to take a minute to admire it all. As for the characters, well they made sure to fit every type of those into the movie they possibly could also. Black Dynamite himself is a conglomeration of a bunch of different people. He's no nonsense like Trouble Man, a former CIA agent like Cleopatra Jones, an all around badass like Jim Brown and Fred Williamson, and a karate master like Jim Kelly. He even uses Jim Kelly's trademark scream. They tried to cram every favorite black exploitation character you can think of into Black Dynamite, and I love it. I also have to give Michael Jai White props for being able to effortlessly convey every single one with ease. Dude is underrated. Black Dynamite isn't the only one who's a throwback to the past. His best friend Bullhorn, played by writer Byron Minns himself, is clearly influenced by Dolomite. He rhymes the entire movie in that loud voice, even in calm scenes, just like Dolomite. Oh, you's a corn-fed fool with a lot of muscle mass, but it's time for Bullhorn. Get up in that Sally Fine Richardson is in it too, as a generic love interest, even though they give her way more personality than most of the women from the 70s ever had. I like how they included the awkward tough guy romance scenes also. Of course, I can't talk about black dynamite and black exploitation as a whole without mentioning the pimps and the big pimp meeting. It's almost ripped directly from the movie Willie Dynamite and has a bunch of famous faces in it like Miguel Le Nunez, Bokeem Woodbine, Arsenio Hall, and even singer Brian McKnight plays the background. They even take a boat just like in Willie Dynamite. How's this it with you, Cyrus? I'm with you, Bill. Oh, bitches? I can dig it, baby. Ta. Crush your feet. Milky Way. Captain Kangaroo Pimp. Really? Really? You probably noticed I haven't mentioned a plot. Yeah, it has one, but let me ask you this. How many of these movies have I talked about this month that has had a coherent and easy to follow plot? 
You could probably count them on one hand, and Black Dynamite knows this. So it does the same thing, and by the time you reach the end of the movie, Black Dynamite is on remote islands with deadly kung fu fighters. The next thing you know, he's at the White House. It's all over the place, and silly on purpose, and that's the whole point of it all. Black Dynamite is the ultimate homage, parody, love letter, whatever terminology you want to use, to the 70s black exploitation era of movies. There's so much more and so many funny moments I could talk about, but it's better if you just watch it for yourself. It's obvious, a lot of love and care went into making this movie, and it was done by people who genuinely loved everything about black exploitation. It was filmed with an old camera and high saturation to give it that same look and feel of the 70s. It has an original soundtrack, written and mostly performed by Adrian Young. And most of all, even though these old movies from the 70s didn't win many awards, I think Black Dynamite is the best celebration of their achievements and impact that anybody could ask for. And it looks like everybody involved loved doing it and had a lot of fun. And I also had fun, going back in time and reviewing all these old movies. I hope you all enjoyed Black's History Month. I watched around 50 movies in preparation for this and chose the 28 that I thought not only made the most impact, but also seemed most interesting to talk about. I know some movies that people were looking for didn't appear on the list, but I'm considering doing this again next year if people enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. There was far more that I could have talked about this month, but I tried to keep most of the videos under 5 minutes, so I touched on the most important parts. The term black exploitation was coined to be a negative term by the NAACP, but I'm glad the connotation was turned around into something embraced by tons of people. It can be argued that this era of movies saved the movie industry in the 70s, and that alone should prove that they deserve their place in cinema history. I'll be back soon with more videos after a short break, so make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and join me here for the next Black Track video. Until next time, I'll holla at you.